Thank you. I'd ask unanimous consent to terminate the quorum call. Without, without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, today, I would like to rise in opposition to uh, Senator Kane's uh, War Powers Resolution, SJ uh, Resolution 68. I've had a long-standing opposition to the War Powers Act. I think it's an unconstitutional intrusion on the ability of any commander-in-chief to defend the nation and to direct military operations. Uh, this uh, statute was passed, uh, I think, in the 70s. It was a way to deal with the Vietnam War. I've always believed the best thing Congress can do when it comes to dealing with military operations or <clears throat> longstanding conflicts that it disapproves of is to cut off funding. And I think that's what the framers had in mind. The inherent authority of any commander in chief to defend the nation is part of our constitutional checks and balances. Uh, the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. You cannot have 535 people planning and implementing uh, military operations. And that 535 would be Congress. Can you imagine what would happen if our nation had to respond in real time and you had to get 535 members of Congress to agree on anything. So this resolution is designed to prevent actions against the Islamic Republic of Iran without congressional authorization. It does acknowledge in the law that we can take defensive action. We can always defend ourselves. That's inherent, I think, to putting people in harm's way. But I have been consistent over time. I've opposed the War Powers Act being used against all presidents Republican or Democrat, and I will continue to do so because I do believe from a national security point of view, this is, will create a nightmare for our country's ability to defend itself. Every commander in chief has to have the latitude and the flexibility to engage enemies of this nation uh, in real time and to send messages that are clear. Uh, the president has decided to withdraw from the Iranian nuclear agreement Early on in his presidency, I supported that action. We're trying to find a way to replace it with something that's more sustainable and acceptable to the region and the world without boring uh, everyone about the flaws in the Iran nuclear agreement. I thought it was a bad deal. It gave the Ayatollah and his henchmen a bunch of money uh, without having to change their behavior. It was tied to their nuclear program, had nothing to do with their missile program or their being the largest state sponsor of terrorism. Now you see Iran is acting out. Since this agreement was signed, they have been involved in operations in Yemen, Lebanon, throughout the entire region. They've captured American sailors on the high seas and humili humiliated them. Uh, their efforts in Lebanon put Israel's very existence at risk by flooding Lebanon with weapons that can be used to destroy our friends in Israel. Uh, they're the largest state sponsor of terrorism, and I applaud the president for standing up to the Iranians. They've attacked the largest oil field in the world in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they've attacked international shipping in the sta Straits of Hormuz, and the president decided to use military force against uh, Soleimani, an Iranian Revolutionary Guard commander that was on the international no-fly list, for lack of a better term, sanctioned uh, by the UN. And I thought he was a legitimate uh, target of war because he's been pushing war against the United States for decades. We've had at least five to 600 soldiers killed in Iraq uh, from IEDs developed in Iran that were used inside Iraq that were very, very <clears throat> lethal to, to American forces. So now we find ourselves <clears throat> in a position where Iran is getting more provocative and the worst possible thing the Congress could do is send a mixed signal. I want the Iranians to know that the Trump administration would like a new deal and a better deal, but that it has to occur through negotiations. And if they continue to dismember the region, develop technology that can destroy our friends in Israel or one day come to our homeland, they will, met, they will be met with all options on the table. Uh, the authors of this uh, resolution are friends. Uh, Senator Kane has had a long-standing concern about the original AUMF right after 9-11. Um, it's one thing to try to rewrite it. It's another thing to use the War Powers Act to tie the hands of the president at a time when our Iranian enemies, and they're the enemies of the United States in the region and the world, 
are becoming more provocative, the Iranian people could be a great ally one day. The Ayatollah is a religious Nazi in my view, and I can't imagine why we're doing this now. It makes conflict more likely, not less. If this passes, the president will never abide by it. No president would. It will be vetoed if that's the appropriate way to do it. But it's going to have no effect on his ability to conduct military operations. But it will have an effect on our enemy's percep perception of the United States' will to stand up to Iranian aggression. It will have an effect on our allies. Can you really trust America? Our friends in Israel are watching with great concern about this debate. So I will oppose this resolution. Fundamentally flawed concept of having a statute that would restrict military operations based on the view of 535 members of Congress. We can only have one commander in chief, not 535. The War Powers Act, uh, has, as it's been written, I think is blatantly unconstitutional. And having said that, uh, we find ourselves at a time of uh, choosing in the Mideast. <clears throat> the Iranians are making calculations every day of how far to push. What would the Americans do if we did this or that? And I want the Iranians to understand that when it comes to their provocative behavior, all options are on the table. And let me tell you a scenario that I fear the most. The Iranians now are up against the wall because of sanctions. What if they reactivate the centrifuges that have been dismantled, or at least mothballed, probably not dismantled? What if they begin enriching uranium at 20%? Go from 3.5% to 20%. From 20 to 90 is months, not years. What would be the appropriate response? Would that be a hostile act under the War Powers Act? I know this, it would be an unacceptable outcome for the United States. And I hope the Trump administration is communicating to the Iranians that any effort to have a nuclear breakout, a dash to a bomb, would be considered a threat to the United States, our allies, particularly Israel, and would be met with military force uh, if, if the provocation continues. I can't think of a more dangerous scenario in real time than the Iranians making a miscalculation that the international community, particularly the United States, will sit on the sideline as they try to ramp up enrichment to have a breakout toward a, toward a bomb. The regime believes if they can ever get a nuclear weapon, they'll be home free, that the world will back off. All I can say to the world is containing the Ayatollah with a nuke is a non-option for me. If you're in Israel, it's not even close to being an option. Because what you have to understand is that they're wanting to make a bomb, not build power plants for peaceful purposes. They want a bomb for a reason, not as an insurance policy to guarantee the regime's survivability, but to enact a religious agenda that is very dangerous, very radical and very real. And people don't want to believe things like this. After World War I, nobody wanted to believe that Hitler had a plan that included killing all the Jews. People just thought he was bluffing and talking rhetoric-wise just to grab more land, and he would be appeased if you just gave him one more thing. It's hard for peace loving people to imagine that folks like Hitler actually exist and would do the things they say they would do. It's hard for us here in the safety of the United States to imagine that someplace in the Mideast there's a regime that's been on our destruction because of our religious differences. Here's what I do believe. If the Ayatollah had a nuclear weapon, he would use it. And there'd be a competition for the first use. Would they go after the Sunni Arabs or a mortal enemy in the Islamic faith to the regime? Would they go after Israel, uh, who there's no spot on the planet for a state of Israel in the radical Shiite theology? Or would they come after us, the greatest of all infidels? I don't know where we'd be one, two, or three, but we'd be in the top three. I do know this, that our Arab allies and our Israeli friends 
can never let that day come. So the best way to prevent the Ayatollah from having a nuclear breakout is for the Congress and this administration and every other administration to make it clear what happens if you try. We're able to win the Cold War because all parties and every president adhere to the idea that we will stand up to the expansion of communism. This is one of those moments in history where I hope we do not miscalculate. The Iranians are watching. North Korea is watching. The world is watching. I'm hoping that the Congress will not miscalculate because if we pass this resolution, the chance of war goes up, not down. The chance of a nuclear breakout becomes almost inevitable. I would ask all of my colleagues to think long and hard about how you will vote today. You may think nothing really will happen if this passes because it will never become law as we know law to be in the United States. You're right about that but you're wrong about the signal it sends. It will send a signal that will be picked up by the most dangerous people on the planet is that we really don't mean it when we say when it comes to Iran getting a nuclear weapon, it will never happen. Madam President, I yield the floor and notice the absence of a quorum.